All right, everyone, so I've not made a video in quite a while. Behind me is approximately 53 acres, which I'm going to attempt to bail today. So I got the Vermeer behind me, the 504R signature, and uh, I'm very, very happy with this thing so far. As you can see, we got uh, 320 bales through it, and yesterday I just switched out the net wrap in it for the first time, and I think 263 bales. So not that bad. The net wrap system on this thing has been flawless. This is one of my favorite things. I promise I'm not chilling for Vermeer. Unfortunately, I bought this thing for full price, but I will say I'm very happy, especially with the net wrap system on this because the New Holland that I had, that 658, it was like every other bale I had to screw with that thing. And granted, obviously it's not supposed to work that way, but we can't get it to work much better than that, except for the time Mechanic Steve came out, spent like an entire day going through everything and then it worked perfectly for one day. And now we're back to this. So whatever the case, uh, for those who didn't watch the video I made when I bought this thing about why I bought this baler, I actually got a quote on a John Deere baler from that specific dealership. Um, but the reason why I bought the Vermeer ultimately, because I, I really couldn't decide which one I wanted, and then I found out that at the John Deere dealer, they needed like a week or 10 days or something to get the baler ready. I'm like, I got hay down, my old baler just caught on fire, I don't have time for this nonsense. And at the Vermeer dealer, they had this thing ready to go, so I bought the Vermeer, and no complaints. I'm sure the John Deere is also fine, but this thing, I should know better than to say things like this, it's been flawless. And uh, like I said, I, I really couldn't decide which one I wanted. So, this is my single biggest field. I have another property that's slightly larger than this, but that one's divided into, I think, four fields. And uh, here we gotta try to get this knocked out. And uh, yeah, I figured out it's a lot easier. Yeah, this is smooth enough. This should be smooth enough for six gear. I found out it's a lot easier if I, if I get everything ready the night before. So last night after I got done bailing the last place, I greased everything on the baler, oiled the chains, did the same on the tractor. And so this morning, pretty much all I had to do is just hop in and hit the road, which is really nice. There's always a million things need to be done. All right, I'm pretty happy right now because uh, this hay has been rained out like four times. <laughs> Oops. I mean, it's just, you know what, it sucks, but there's really nothing I could do. The weather was forecast clear when I cut it. And then, uh, like I said, it's been rained on multiple times. And, uh, you know, so I came out here, I raked it all up. I combined three windrows into one in this part of the field. And I figured out how I could roll four windrows together on that part. And uh, I, I'm pretty happy because you can see this is dry hay. It says, it was reading at seven and 8% moisture only moments ago. Uh, I should have stopped that one a little sooner. Someone's getting a free inch of bail. Yeah. Um, come on, thing. I say that it's actually really fast. What was I talking about? Right, we're seven and 8% moisture and then it, the reading was so low that the baler couldn't even register it, so it just says dry hay at that point. So I'm very happy about that. I did get this stuff to dry. So, yeah, here we go. Oh no! Well, shoot. Dang it. We got two in a row up there. Two in a row is probably not a coincidence. Let's go see if there's anything going on with the, uh, oh, with the net wrap. Is there even wrap here? Sort of. Where's the rest of it? Oh, shiggy diggy. Ah, oh, crap. Now we have to run these out and uh, bail them again. This is one of many, many things I like about making smaller bales. When you do have to unroll them, it goes uh, pretty easy. I would stop and make sure everything looks okay on the inside of the baler and we don't have the end of the net wrap wrapped around a roller or something, but I cannot because there's almost a full bale in there. 
Uh, yeah, that was pretty weird. I'm going to give this an extra wrap. And we'll see if it ties this bale properly. Hmm. Shiggy diggy. That would be our problem. Not really seeing anything else wrapped around anything else. Huh. that cleared out and the usual problem is that i mean there is nowhere to put anything in this tractor i don't even know what i'm gonna do with this because this is such a huge bulb it's gonna be like jamming itself underneath the pedals and everything See what's going on okay i think we're good okay well that's sort of a pain but tis what it is just check and make sure i don't see any wrap trying to come through the side of this like off the edge of that roller okay um famous last words but i think we're good now It's a working. Man, that's a different consistency in that wrap. Yeah, there were the two bales that I showed you guys, and then one more bale that had the, the, uh, the side blow out of it, but I caught it early on. So I only had to redo one bale instead of two as opposed to last time. Shut the thing for the hydraulic pickup. And uh, man, this is going really well. I feel very, very happy. Look, I don't know if you guys can see that. Maybe if I, not really, but 250 bales out there and then, you know, counting like 10 that are in this area. I feel really happy because last year due to constant mechanical breakdowns, and mainly the fact that it, it essentially just didn't rain at all for the first seven months of the year. And then, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, first eight months of the year. And then it rained for seven months straight, pretty much all day, every day. Uh, because of those two things, I don't think I even went through a single roll of net wrap last year. And I've gone, I'm changing them like every day, essentially, as I'm actually bailing. Now, obviously, I don't bail every day. It takes a while to go through. And uh, it takes a while to go through and mow and rake and everything. And we're about to experience one reason why I decided to produce 250 bales and call it a day. And that is that this field is pretty rough. This is, you know, no, nothing is really planted on this property. And out there was the predominant thing growing was Johnson grass, which makes excellent hay. My customers love it. I have no problem selling it. And uh, it's, you know, it's a great forage. Here, there's a little less of that and a lot more weeds and fill. And the main problem with this small little side field is I think someone, uh, someone over there got a truck stuck and they went mudding through here to get over there, presumably. And so there's some really brutal ruts. So I was thinking to myself, I was like, you know, we're really low on fuel. We got like under, well, I don't know, about an eighth of a tank. And down to an eighth of a tank. Uh, it's getting late. Um, and uh, 
and, and just a lot of this stuff out here. Like I got some good bales out of this area obviously, but pretty much all of the untouched part of this field, at least that I came through today, the parts that I haven't messed with today, what do the old timers say? The swallow ain't worth the chew or something. You know, describing grizzly steak or whatever. And that's kind of how I feel about this. I mean, I could wring another bale or two out of it, but it's gonna take a lot of time. Uh, I might have to go home and get more fuel if I'm gonna stay much longer. And I run a high risk of damaging something on this baler crashing over those ruts. So it's just, it's not really worth it. It's just time to leave. Anyway, this is more hay than I have bailed at any point in any day in my life. I'm pretty sure, yes, it should be. And I'm very, oh, more ruts. They're in like three places. I thought we were gonna miss that. Oh, that is brutal.